we're talking about lakes and I would like to know what is your favorite lake in San Diego hmm. not I mean, well you but the folks out there in general too what's your favorite lake my favorite lake in San Diego is Miramar Reservoir that's the best five mile run or hike you'll you'll take in San Diego County that's close by well that's my favorite lake too and I'm not sure if we can both have the same favorite lake you might have to find a different favorite lake what's your second favorite lake I think we might want to uh, base this on who's run around Miramar Reservoir more times. <laughs> All right, but I've run around Miramar Reservoir a bunch of times too. So, but oh. you you beat me. You you definitely have run around more. So, um, I will go with Lake Cuyamaca as my favorite lake. If you want Miramar, I'll take Cuyamaca. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll settle this later. But yeah. anyway, so Lake Miramar is good for you know running and hike. Well, I guess you can hike. You can walk. You, you can, can walk. You could walk around it. You could ride your bike. You could roller skate. Um, I'm sure there's other different ways you could get around Lake Miramar. Right. Now, do you remember the first time we ever went to Lake Miramar? Oh, gosh. Yes. Hmm. How long ago was that? It was like... Well, it was when we very first moved here. It was in 2001, and it was just after 9-11 because we were looking... We, we hadn't been in... We'd been in San Diego for just a couple of months, and we were looking for like a nice day hike or day walk. Well, this was like 2001. Yeah. 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 Right after 9-11. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and <clears throat> so we were looking online, San Diego County Recreation or whatever it was, and we found, you know, Miramar Reservoir. It's a loop. It's five miles. And we were really into walking at the time, so we thought that sounds really cool. And it was kind of a warm day. It was a hot day. Yeah. And from the parking lot, it didn't look like it. It was that long of a loop. Well, we knew it was five miles. The problem was because of 9-11, they had closed the dam and we did not know that. Oh, so right. So we okay. got all the way around to where you hit the dam at mile four and it was closed. So we could not walk over the dam and complete the loop and get back to the car. We had to turn around and go the four miles back. So it turned out to be an eight mile walk and it was hot. And there were times when we could see our car across the lake and was tempted to jump in and swim to the car. It didn't look like it was that far back, but if you've been around Miramar Lake, it goes in and out. There's all kinds of fingers mm. and arms, and they all have names like, you know, Penasquito's arm, or I can't yeah. recall the other names, but they have, you know, arms of different local places. Lake Murray's also pretty decent. Okay. Well, Lake Cuyamaca is good if you want to go see some snow. We were there last. That's my new favorite lake. Well, I doubt you'd find snow there right now. <laughs> Okay, but in the winter time, yeah. if you're looking for a snowy place and you don't want to have to drive far, you just want to go play in the snow, um, that was a good place. Yeah, there's a nice recreation there, yes. area there, and I think we just had to go into the whatever it was, the general store, and pay 10 bucks so we could get in the parking lot. And it, was, it was worth it. Decent. And did you decent. know that San Diego is home to over 20 fishable lakes? Um, I didn't know we had that many. Yes. Um, Lake Miramar is known for producing, producing some of the biggest largemouth bass in California. Yeah? Mm -hmm. My friend Angela has a largemouth bass tattooed on her. <laughs> that I just popped I remember that, yeah. That's, <laughs> also, now that you're mentioning fishing, Lake Poway is also pretty mm. nice. You can rent like pedal boats and stuff there too, which yep. I think you can do in many of the San and Diego you, you lakes. Can, you can fish for trout there, although I've never been able to <laughs> figure out how to catch one. You and John used to go to Lake Poway all the time when he was little and try to try to catch fish. And I, yeah. Did you ever catch one? No. No. Okay. Well. When I was young, I used to be able to trout fish and reel them in left and right, but um, for some reason, me and John never had any luck out there. And you know, part of it is he was really small and you know wouldn't sit still or stand still. Yeah. I mean, in order to fish, you have to kind of plant yourself in the same place for a while and work the area and be quiet and all that kind of stuff. When I was a kid, I used to go fishing uh, at my grandparents' place on Clear Lake, and we would catch perch. Mm. Yes, Clear Lake, um, although um, Clear Lake is like full of mercury from all the gold mining. That's what I was just going to say. It was probably mm. full of mercury, but you know. You turned out all I right. I turned out okay for the most part. Right. Yep. Um, lakes, I mean, there's lake appreciation. I mean, I, I used to work for a company that made uh, maps of lakes. And that was that was interesting. I got to learn about various lakes all around the country and fishing spots and depth contours and uh, submerged timber and all sorts of crazy things like that. 
Well, that is very interesting. Yes. I, I can tell. I can feel. I can feel people are hanging on every word. All right. Well, let's uh, move on to talking about something even more interesting than fishing maps, okay. which is the real estate market. Yes. Okay. So I've got the uh, San Diego Association of Realtors um, made or the June numbers. They give us these numbers every month, and it's a recap of what happened in the past uh, over the past month. So uh, let's talk about month to month before we go into year over year stuff. So new listings uh, between May and June, they went up 5.6%. Yep, so that means new, yeah, new listings. Right, um, new homes on the market. Right. Pending sales down 18.7%. Significant drop. Closed sales down 10.6%. Yep. Uh, median sales price down 1.7%. That's just month to month. Yes. Yep, well that all kind of jives with uh, what I've been, what we've been seeing and feeling and I believe that the numbers are gonna look a lot better when it comes to pending and, um, well, certainly the pending number is gonna be better July, uh, June to July. I wanna say one more number though. Go ahead. Um, homes for sale, that's new stuff mm. on the market that hasn't sold and stuff that's hanging around, up 35%. That's, yeah, there's a lot of new, I mean, 35% is a big jump in, in uh, standing inventory. Yes, um, and that's kinda new, homes sticking around on the market. You know, yes. In, in, in this day and age recently, we haven't seen that too much. So. We haven't, although that's more normal than not. I mean, uh, more, just the last two years have seen this phenomenon where you have like no standing inventory at all. It just comes on and goes off, comes on and goes off, and there's more pending than there is standing. That's unusual. What we have now is actually more uh, normal to what we're used to seeing in the past. A more balanced market, you would say at this point? It's it's finding its new groove for okay. sure. I, I think that it's finding its new groove and I am definitely seeing, uh, when I look at the pending lists for various zip codes, I'm seeing a lot of homes that have been on the market for 30, 40 days all of a sudden pending now. Well, that's good. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think this is all kind of um, gonna shake out one way or another, rates came down. This yeah, past that week. was a nice and little surprise. The, yeah. the dip in rates. It was. Mm -hmm. I think it. Uh, the thirty-year fixed dipped half a point over the last two weeks. So right. that's that's definitely a better uh, better direction than going the other way. So some right. good news there. Well, mortgage banks. Um, I mean, the the eighteen and a half percent drop in pending sales affects <clears throat> lenders, and they're like, okay, nobody's borrowing, so maybe we should <laughs> give a little on the rates because they are, I mean, the, the difference, well, anyway, I was gonna talk about the difference between the Fed funds rate, but we did that in our other videos. So. Yes, if you want an in-depth discussion of what's going on with the real estate market, check out our YouTube channel or our Facebook or even our Instagram, um, yes. probably some other places too. Probably. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give a Cliff's Notes version of what happened, the yearly trend, uh, June 2021 to June 2022. Just real quick, uh, new listings down 12%, pending sales down 38.7%, closed sales down 34.6%, median price up 12.4%, which is a pretty good jump, uh, not as good as it was you know, two months ago or so, but still a good, uh, good return on your investment there. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, average sale price up 11 point, oh, a median price, we just talked about that. Yeah. Well, okay, we'll talk about average too. Average is up 11.5, which, you know, average and median, we could talk about the difference between that, but. So pending sales year over year are down how much? That says, I don't have my glasses on, but that says 38.7, right? Well, it sure does, wow. That's a significant drop in pending sales. Um, and the month over month number was pretty ugly too. I guess that doesn't really surprise me. I think that's gonna be looking a lot better next month. June is often pretty slow, so we'll, we'll look is. for a little better numbers next month. It is, but how, this June was 38.7% slower than last. So that's... Oh, well, okay, anyway. Anyway. Um, I'm getting tired of holding this paper. Do you wanna hold it for a while or maybe we could just, okay, we're done with that paper. All right, let's talk about something else. Let's talk about the construction at the airport. Yeah, Okay. sure. So um, travelers are being advised to expect congestion and delays this week and into the foreseeable future because they're building a new terminal, is that right? Well, they're, yeah, it sounds like they're kind of rebuilding Terminal 1, which was a, uh, it's a 1960s era terminal. And I've got some notes here. Um, here I'm going to say my notes first and then you can take it away, okay? I'm sorry. 
that was so it's out of go no go okay. ahead um so they're demolishing the terminal one pedestrian bridge this weekend you know that's where you walk across with, yes. yeah so people are just going to have to use the crosswalk and they're expecting lots of uh, problems because of that uh, and they're saying parking will be extremely limited so but they're building the new terminal though we'll have uh more gates more security lines and more parking spaces Okay, yes. you take it away. What's um, going on at the airport? I think it's it's funny uh, with, you know, like people traveling, like the there's a, advisories for the 4th of July weekend telling people, hey, it's going to suck. <laughs> and people, st people still are like, well, screw it. It'll be fine for me. And then they get bent out of shape when they have all these delays. I have and, a special... Uh, yeah. A special way that I get around right. the air airport lines. So uh, make no mistake, the San Diego Airport Authority is telling you that flying out of Lindbergh is going to suck for a while, especially Terminal 1. Um, so yeah, it's a $2.265 billion project, and it's going to add a 1.2 million square foot building with 30 gates, and as you say, more uh, security lines and so on and so forth. And um, it's, I, I mean, we don't do a whole ton of flying. We, we pretty much, stay, we kind of stay local. We're, we're really hyper. I we like to take the train. Yeah. We, we, we the just train travel is less intense than, than yes. uh, air, the airline travel. Air, air more, travel, yeah. More enjoy I enjoy the train. I don't enjoy flying on an airplane. Right. And we haven't done much of, we haven't done any of either for the last couple of years. No. So anyway, um, uh, what was my point? Oh, San Diego uh, Airport, Lindbergh Field, um, is actually the busiest single runway airport in the, I believe in the country for sure, and I'm not sure where it ranks in the world, but there's only one runway, which is unusual for such a, a busy airport that has, you know, tons of uh, arriving and departing flights every day. And also uh, the approach to uh, that single runway is one of the 10 most dangerous approaches in the world. I would believe it. Every time I see a plane coming in low when I'm mm. downtown, I'm like, oh man, that's, uh, that's crazy. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, tr it's, I mean, there, there are definitely more uh, treacherous approaches that pilots have to fly in terms of making turns at low altitudes and stuff. The good news about Lindbergh is they can kind of fly straight in, but because of the proximity to the terrain, Pilots are not allowed to use what's called the uh, instrument landing system. They can use a localizer, which keeps them lined up left to right, but they cannot use the uh, instrument landing system that controls, helps them control the altitude with autopilot. So they essentially have to kind of hand fly in, and you've got to get it right because you're only, you know, 100 or so feet off of the terrain. <laughs> Uh, right before you cross uh, Interstate 5. So it's a, yeah, it's a treacherous approach. But also it's, uh, it's our airport and it's pretty cool when you're downtown to see the planes coming and going. And then if you're in Point Loma, you see them more, more going for sure. Well, hopefully that they get the uh, airport fixed up soon so people yes. can have a more uh, expedited and enjoyable experience at the right. airport. And then there are the rare, <clears throat> day, the rare days when the prevailing wind changes. Uh, usually we get a westerly flow and uh, airplanes have to take off and land into the wind. And when we get the Santa Ana that switches to an easterly flow, then the approach and the takeoff is, oh well, no, the takeoff is over the city, which I would imagine, I've never, I've never taken off that way, but uh, that, would, that would be uh, nerve wracking, I would imagine, because as you're screaming down the runway, you're gonna see the, the buildings getting closer and closer, and then you're gonna, take off so I don't know if that's more unnerving than seeing getting closer and closer as you come down or not but um, anyway that's Lindbergh all right well new terminal good stuff yep okay so the fair is closed no more fair um, but they are still trying to um, find owners of some lost and found items and apparently the lost and found is managing 1400 items that were lost at the fair and need to be found so they've got 50 pairs of glasses uh, over 200 credit cards. Seems like that would be easy to track down. Yeah, right. right. Um, and they've got, and then they have some more obscure items like crutches, an oxygen tank, one stroller wheel, <laughs> and a six six foot tall stuffed dog. Now, how do you lose a six foot tall stuffed dog? I don't know. So somebody somewhere in San Diego County is missing a stroller wheel. Mm -hmm. Go go pick that up. 
I mean, how are you? How are you how, pushing your stroller? That's got to be a challenging. Yeah. Don't waste your money on a new stroller. They've got your wheel. <laughs> right. Just go get your wheel. Okay. Um, so the fair is closed. That's it for the fair. But an Idaho man just broke a world record for the longest distance walked while balancing a guitar on his chin. I'm like, okay. Yeah. How long do you think this dude walked, this guy from Idaho? His name was David Rush, if that makes any difference. David Rush walked with a guitar balanced on his chin. What kind of guitar was it? Did he didn't it say. say. That, that would be a good thing to know. I think yeah. it was acoustic, but I'm not sure. I would think so because I can't imagine how you would balance an electric guitar on your chin. How far did, would he walk? I don't know, half a mile? 3.4 miles. My God. I know. It took him an hour and seven minutes. That's pretty good. Yeah. He said that afterwards he was dizzy and sore and he had to lie down on the ground for some time to recover. Well, congratulations, Mr. Rush. That's quite an accomplishment. Yeah, good job. Good job. I'm not even going to try to beat that one. I don't no think way. I could go even, you know, 10 steps with a guitar balanced on my chin. I, I, would, I wouldn't even want to try. I, I, pref I mean, to, to me, that's sort of a... Um, I don't know. It's an improper use of a guitar. I have a guitar right here. It's a small one. Do you want to try it? What, balancing it on yeah. my chin? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a bad idea. Yeah, terrible idea. Okay. Yeah, I don't know, yeah. How, I don't know how you would do that. I, I that was like a quarter of a second. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Oh, my. Oh, it's, oh okay. Never mind. We're not, right, okay. not going to play the guitar. Um, yes, so we tried to balance the guitar on the chin and it doesn't work well. That gives me even more appreciation for right. David Rush from Idaho because Good job, bud. it seems nearly impossible. Okay. We'll play for you some other time. Yes. You got anything else you want to talk about? I do not. All right, well, um, maybe we should get along with our dinner time plans then. I, I'd say let's move along with the evening and let these folks, you know, move along with their evening. Thanks for joining us, of course. Um, and we'll, you know, talk to you, talk to you next, next week. Make sure and uh, watch for Eric's Neighborhood Watch and San Diego Market Watch with me, your host, Eric Edelman. And then uh, again, a week from today with uh, TGIF, uh, what, what, what is this TGIF one? Live. TGIF <laughs> Live. <laughs> All right. All right, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you have a good weekend and we'll see you next time. See you soon.